Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about products that I've completely changed my mind about. And you guys know, as a full-time makeup reviewer, I like to take my time. I like to really form a solid opinion on things before I post a video about it. And once I've reviewed something, you know that I really either like it or don't like it or whatever my opinion is, it pretty much stays that way. But occasionally I do first impressions here on my channel and that's kind of where it goes wrong because Sometimes I can really try a product and love it. And then as time goes on, I'm not as crazy about it. Other times I try a product that I absolutely hate, but then I sometimes figure out a different way to use it or my tastes change over time and I end up really loving it. So those are the products that we're gonna talk about today in this video. And I'm gonna share the times when I was wrong about a product for better or for worse. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right guys, so I actually did a YouTube short about this topic a couple of weeks ago now, and there were a few products in there that I also wanted to just mention in this video and just expand on it a little bit more because in YouTube shorts, you only have a minute at the most to talk about it. So the first product that I talked about in that short was the Eucerin Sensitive Mineral Face SPF. So this is an SPF 35. It's supposed to be like a universal tint that goes with every skin tone. Honestly, I'm not sure. I felt like it matched me pretty well. It looked a little bit too deep, like first coming out of the tube, but once I blended it, it was totally fine. And when I first tried this product, I absolutely loved the texture of it because I have really dry skin and this is super emollient. It feels basically like a moisturizer and a pretty rich moisturizer at that. So I was all about this when I first tried it back in the spring or early summer. And at that time, I really was just wearing this alone because I would go out, like bring my son to school or in the summertime, I was just running little errands here and there and I wasn't really doing a full face of makeup. But then in like mid July, I took this with me on a trip to Maine and I was wearing it under a full face of makeup and we were outside a lot. And that's when I noticed that my makeup was just not holding up. It wasn't lasting throughout the day. And I was like, what is going on? Is it this? Because this is like just so rich and emollient. It was literally making my makeup slide off and break up and as a dry skin person that's something that I normally don't deal with so I'm like I, I had to kind of figure it out and then I realized that it was this unfortunately this was the only one that I brought for my face on my trip with me so I had to kind of stick it out but when I got home I just started wearing other sunscreens and a different mineral formula that I've really been enjoying is this one from Hero this is the force shield sunscreen and this is actually meant for oily skin but it works out so well for me and I love that it's not greasy. I've thoroughly tested this one out in the heat of the summer and it doesn't make my makeup slide off or break up. It's a much lighter weight formula than this one is, but it still gives me a little bit of moisture, which I like. But honestly, I don't even really need my SPF to give me moisture because that's kind of what a moisturizer is for. So I've completely changed my mind about this Eucerin one. I may go back to it in the winter time when it's like super dry outside and I'll test it again and see if it still makes my makeup slide off or break up. But because it's not working for me right now, I haven't worn this since July. Another product I talked about in that YouTube short is the NYX Ultimate Palette. So I have two different ones. I have the Paradise one and the Vintage Jean Baby. This one is really cool toned and beautiful. This one is a little bit more warm toned and it's the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today. So when I first swatched these, I was really kind of disappointed because I felt like they just swatched very sheer and I'm thinking, okay, NYX was supposed to improve this formula from what it was before. I don't feel like it was an improvement at all. And I even mentioned how sheer they were in a YouTube short and a lot of you guys were like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy those but I've completely changed my mind. I definitely think they're worth buying now. Now that I've had a chance to try them and play with them a little bit, I think they are wonderful. I actually don't think they apply that sheer to your eyes when you are applying them with a brush. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're heavily pigmented either, but I just feel like they're the right amount of pigment. They're not super sheer. They're not so pigmented that you can't blend them out easily. I think when I apply these to my eyes, the color definitely shows up. It blends out really nicely and I can easily just build up the color to whatever I prefer. And I think the shimmer shades are beautiful in these as well 
purple. They're kind of a mix of topper shades and also there are some that are just really beautiful, shiny, metallic, and creamy foiled shades. So I think they're really versatile for getting a ton of different looks. And the one thing that really surprised me about these is the lasting power. These last so long on my eyes. Every time I've done an eye look with either one of these palettes, I felt like it lasted all throughout the day. Now that could be because some of the shades in here are pressed pigments and those tend to sometimes have a staining effect on your skin. But yeah, I was totally blown away by the longevity of these as well. So if you're looking for an eyeshadow that really holds up and I feel like these palettes, they have so many colors in them, but they're not super big or overwhelming either. I think you'll really enjoy these. I think there are other versions too. So I want to go back to Ulta and see what else they have because like I said, I've really been enjoying these. These have been some of my favorite drugstore palettes lately. Next up, we have the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. So you all know how I feel about tubing mascaras and I've that's basically all I've been wearing lately in the last year or so. Ever since I found the Thrive Cosmetics one, I've kind of made it my mission to try every single tubing mascara that's out there. And some have been major flops. Other ones I've really liked. I like the new Milani one, for example. I like the Tarte tubing mascara. Um, but one of you had recommended this Hourglass one to me and I didn't even realize that it was a tubing formula. So as soon as you had told me that, I said, okay, I'm buying it. And I wanted to get the mini and it was sold out. So I ended up just paying full price for the big one, which I normally don't do when it comes to high-end mascaras because they normally don't have a long shelf life and I don't use up this entire tube. So minis usually suit me a little bit better and I think I'll get the mini one next time. But anyway, this is a pretty expensive mascara and I remember getting it home and trying it out and I was pretty underwhelmed and I even talked about it in a video right after that about how it just didn't give me like the length and volume that I was looking for and I might have even compared it to the Milani one I can't remember but I just really wasn't super impressed especially for the price fast forward a couple of weeks I didn't really use this one more than a couple of times and then I realized that my Milani tube had gotten really old and it wasn't performing as well and I was like I need to get a new mascara I remembered that I had this one so I decided to just use it and try it again and all of a sudden it was like a night and day difference. It gave me so much length and I was like, wait a minute, what happened? I think it's because when mascaras dry out over time, sometimes they just perform better. And I think that's what happened with this one because like I said, it wasn't initially impressive, but then like a few weeks out, I was just loving it. So I've been wearing this one every single day since that day that I rediscovered it, which was sometime like towards the end of July. I haven't worn any other mascara. I love this that much. So I think it just kind of needed some time to get going and and I have a feeling if I get the mini one next time that I'll probably like that one right off the start. For some reason, mini mascaras just perform better. And my theory is because it's a smaller tube, it probably dries out quicker. Like if you think about it and you have some liquid in a small container and then you have it in a larger container, which one's gonna dry out first, the smaller one? So I think that could be why the minis always seem to be better. And I know a lot of you guys feel that way too. We talked about it in my beauty conspiracy theories video. So anyway, to make a long story short, I didn't love this one at first, but I absolutely love it now. And I think I even like it better than the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions, which has been my favorite tubing mascara this whole time. It just gives me so much length. It gives a ton of separation too, like there's no clumpiness and it does give a little bit of volume. It's just like that really false lash look and normally tubing mascaras don't really do that for me, but this one is just, it's on another level. I love it. Next up, we have another product that I loved at first but I slowly started to realize that it wasn't right for me and that is the Makeup by Mario cream blushes. So these I loved so much when I first tried them because they have this really like lightweight texture. They're sheer, they look so natural on the skin. They're easy to use. They're basically foolproof because they're so sheer that you can't mess them up. And I would just kind of layer the color to whatever I wanted it to be. They almost have this translucent quality to them where it just doesn't look heavy on the skin. It doesn't look makeup-y. So I loved that about these. And I ended up like starting with two colors. Then I went back and I bought three more. So I think I have five of them all together and they're not cheap. So yeah, that was me putting the cart before the horse 
for sure, because it's not something that I really noticed at first, but over the course of several weeks, I would notice like at the end of the night, I would look in the mirror and I would just feel like I looked pale and something was off. And then I started to realize, oh, I don't have any blush on anymore. So after this happening several times and realizing that every time it happened, I was wearing these, I started to pay closer attention to the point where I started checking in the mirror like midway through the day and the blush was gone. And then I even checked like an hour or after applying these one day and it wasn't there anymore. So I thought, you know, what is going on? They just don't last. And when I mentioned this in another video, a couple of people had said these are kind of meant to be applied with powder together and that that'll help them to last longer, which I totally believe. So I could do that and I probably will just so that these don't go to waste. But for me, it kind of ruins the ease of a cream blush to be able to just open the compact, pick up a little with your fingers and dab it on quickly. To have to like kind of layer up products just isn't as like fuss free as I was thinking that these would be. Not that it's a big deal, but it turns me off from using them because I feel like there's other cream blushes in my collection that I can just quickly swipe on and I don't have to layer them up to get them to last. So that's the story with the Mario blushes. I had a similar experience with the Merit blushes too. And these actually, now that I think about it, have a really similar texture to the Mario. They're like really, really silky. They're very thin and lightweight and they just kind of melt into your skin. They look so seamless and natural. I have three colors of these and again, not inexpensive, but just like the Mario blushes, they don't last. These are another product that I liked enough to buy in three colors, but the more I started using it, the more I realized that it's just not for me because even though, again, I can layer them up, I could probably do things to make them last longer. I just feel like I shouldn't have to. I should just be able to apply it. That's it. So those are another one that I liked at first, but they're just not one that I reach for these days. However, there is a cream blush that I wasn't crazy about when I first tried it and now I really enjoy them a lot and those are the Persona Dream Sticks. So when I first tried these, I think my mistake was that I took the blush and I just kind of went like this on my cheek. Now these have a little bit of an emollient feel to them. They can be a little bit greasy at times and I think that's because they're meant for the cheeks and the lips. So when you do a big swipe like that, it lays down a lot of product. It's gonna be greasy and I found that these kind of broke up my foundation. They looked a little streaky and a little patchy when I tried to blend them. So I tried them a couple times and then they sat in a drawer for a while. But last fall, or maybe it was the winter time, they released the jam shade. And that was at the time when all of like the cold girl looks were going around on TikTok and YouTube shorts. And this is like the perfect color for that. It's this beautiful berry red shade. And I wanted to try it out so badly, but I was like, eh, I don't really love that formula. But because this is a deeper color for me, I didn't wanna just swatch it right on because I have kind of a lighter skin tone. So I thought, let me just kind of pick this up with a brush and apply it that way. And that changed everything for me. When I pick these up from the tube with a brush and then apply them to the skin, it applies such a lightweight layer. They don't end up being as dewy. They sink right into your skin and kind of set down better. And they also didn't move my foundation around like when I applied a really thick layer. So today I'm actually wearing the Teddy shade, which is a beautiful nude. And another thing that I really love about these two, again, is that they're a two-in-one product. You can use them on your lips as well. So I remember when I did the cold girl look with the jam one, I ended up using it both on my lips and my cheeks. And the way that I applied it to my lips is I just took a little bit on my ring finger and just kind of patted it into my lips and it created this beautiful soft stain that wasn't as dark as it looked in the tube. It was just this beautiful blush of color. And today I actually used the Teddy shade on my lips and it's a beautiful nude that just enhances your lip color the tiniest little bit. It's not gonna be anything bold. So if you have more going on with your eye look or your blush and you just want to keep your lips really simple. I think Teddy is a great color for that as well. And even though these have a little bit of an emollient feel, I like to just still put them over lip balm just because I have really dry lips. But when I pat them in like that, it kind of creates a little bit of a soft stain and they have really great lasting power. So these are a product that I was very meh about when I first tried them, but I think it was just user error. I wasn't really applying them correctly. And I think they're actually beautiful now 
now I have all of the different colors and I just love how gorgeous they are. Even the deeper shades, you can really sheer out if you want to and just make them very subtle or you can build them up for more intensity. So I think these are great. Next up, I have a couple of foundations that I've changed my mind on. The first one is the Say Glowy Super Skin Foundation. So I had applied this during a get ready with me a couple of months ago. I think it was around the beginning of the summer. And my initial impression was that I absolutely loved it. It kind of like has plumping ingredients. It made my skin look so dewy and healthy. It doesn't have a ton of coverage, but it just was so nourishing on my dry skin. So I immediately loved it. However, the more I wore this, the more I realized that as I wore it throughout the day, it would kind of look streaky, patchy. It started to break up on my skin all the time. And I get that skin tints aren't always the longest lasting foundation, but I found this one to be worse than your average skin tint as far as wear time goes. And I hadn't worn it for a couple of weeks and I noticed that everything in the bottle had separated. It's not doing it right now because as soon as I picked it up and I shook it a little bit, it kind of all went back together. But it just kind of made me think if all the ingredients in the bottle are separating and it's not like I let it sit for a year, it was literally a couple of weeks, like what's it gonna do on your face? It can't even hold together in the packaging. So I was pretty disappointed in this formula, especially because initially it does make my skin look really good and it's not as greasy as some of the other skin tints I've tried, like the new Hourglass one, and just feels like very thick and heavy. And this one didn't feel like that. So I had high hopes for it, but it just doesn't last on me. Another foundation that I really used to love, I used to be so into this and now it's not my favorite anymore, is the It Cosmetics CC Cream, the original one. And initially I loved this because it gave a really good medium to full coverage, but it still felt like a moisturizer. So it didn't look particularly dry or cakey on my dry skin. But I think this is one of those cases where I still like the product. I think it's a good product. And if I want full coverage, this is something that I'll reach for because I know that it'll look nice on my skin, but I feel like I've kind of grown out of it a little bit or at least wearing it on a regular basis. I guess I just prefer less coverage these days and this just feels very heavy and almost mask-like when I wear it. I've actually been reaching for their Nude Glow CC Cream because it feels almost identical. It's like a moisturizer, but it's just thinner it's lighter weight, it doesn't give quite as much coverage, and it lets my natural skin just show through a little bit more. It basically has everything that I loved about this one, just in a lighter weight formula. So if you're like me and you find the original CC cream to just be a little bit too much or maybe too heavy, try this one because it's basically replaced the original for me. The next product is another one that I didn't really realize I didn't like until I was using it for a while, and that's the Rare Beauty Lip Line. So when I first saw these in store, you know, I kind of swatched it and I was like, oh, it's so creamy. It just feels so hydrating and nice. Let me get this and see what it's all about. And for a while I was using this and I felt like I was happy with it because I would generally line my lips and then kind of just fill them in with the pencil and then add a little bit of lip balm. I was almost using it as a lipstick. But when I wanted to use it as a lip liner, I started to notice that every time I did, my lips would just look kind of messy or smudgy, just not as defined as I wanted them to. And I also don't love how it's like a twist up, so you can't sharpen it and the point is always really, really dull on it. So you can't really get that sharp, crisp line that I'm looking for in a lip liner. So I started just not reaching for this one as much. I just have better luck with something like the NYX lip liners because these are like the wooden pencil type that you have to sharpen so you can get it nice and sharp. It creates a really nice point. And the formula isn't super dry where you feel like it's hard to even draw it or it's like tugging on your lips too much but it's not so emollient either that it's gonna slide all around. Like it actually does its job as a lip liner and just kind of creates that sharp outline that you're looking for on days that you use lip liner. I don't always use them, but I just felt like I got into a mode where I was always choosing lip liners based on how creamy they were. Those are the ones that I really never end up reaching for when I actually need a lip liner. I use them more for just filling in and basically use them as a lipstick and then I'll usually just 
put a gloss on top or something for hydration. So I'll still continue to use this in that way, but I just don't think that I'll use it as a lip liner anymore. It's definitely not my preferred type of formula. I also had to mention this Huda Beauty matte Obsessions palette. So this is the cool Obsessions one. It is mostly cool tone, but she added this kind of warmer orangey shade down here. I'm not sure why, but these are definitely my colors, the ones that I absolutely love to wear. But for so long, I didn't really wear this palette, even though she sent it to me in PR. I just never really played with it because for the longest time, I always felt like every eyeshadow look I did had to have a shimmer shade on my lid. I never really did all matte looks before, but I saw someone on YouTube do a tutorial of this. I think it was Angela Bright and her look came out so beautiful. I decided to just start playing with this because the colors are just stunning. And I realized that I actually don't always need to have a shimmer shade for my eye looks to come out really pretty. I think especially too, as I'm getting older, being in my mid forties now, my eyelids are starting to have a little bit of like the crepey texture that usually shimmer shades can enhance a little bit more. So I'm kind of embracing the all matte palettes lately. I know Patrick Ta has a new one that just came out that looks really good. I might actually get it. And that's something that I never would have said before, but I've really been enjoying this one. So I guess we'll see. Anyway, guys, those are the products that I've tried somewhat recently that I've completely changed my mind on. I'd love to hear from you guys. Are there any products you've changed your mind about either for better or worse? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have some extra time and you'd like to watch another video of mine, I'll just put a playlist right up here of some of my recent videos to check out next. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.